the specific point of view I wanted to play with, the first one's told from the rich. It's the side of the rich. It's this rich family, rich family who's making money off the purge. That's kind of the point of view we're telling the first one from. So I said, if I ever do part two, it's going to be from the poor side. It's going to be from the people who can't protect themselves. So that was the whole idea in the first one, is these rich people can protect themselves. They can buy barri you know, barricades. If we go to part two, it'll be the people who can't really afford protection. That's the whole idea of this kind of, the way that, you know, the way, the subtle kind of political message is how do we treat the poor in our society? Um, and a lot of this came after the, the flood, you know, in Louisiana and the floods and everything that happened down there. And I saw what happened and how everybody was treated down there. A lot of this started there and how we treat the poor in, our, in, in America. So we were like, let's focus on the poor. Let's go with the people who can't afford themselves. So the point of view is specifically, let's flip it. We did the rich, let's do the poor now in, in part two. Frank Grillo plays our, he, he goes unnamed in the movie. He's kind of a very mysterious character. He's clearly going out to purge. He's, he's, uh, he's packing guns and body armor and we don't know why. We get a couple of clues as to something's happened in his past with his ex-wife and maybe a child. But we don't know exactly what he's about to do in this night. So he's very mysterious. He's kind of like the lone gunman, kind of the snake Plissken, escape from New York kind of character. We don't know what he's really up to. So he's kind of this mysterious through line going, going, going out on this evening. And then the other characters, the first characters I came up with were this mother and daughter who were struggling in the society. She was a single mom. We don't know where the father's gone. She's taking care of a very sickly father. Um, and we're, we're seeing them just struggle in this world financially. And the weight of the world is kind of on her shoulders to try to protect her daughter on this night and her, and her father who's dying. And so we're focused on her. And she's kind of, they're the kind of moral center of, of that, that little pack of a mother, daughter, and grandfather, focusing on them. And then the third cup, the third part of the equation is this young couple who um, they're traveling to their sisters, to the husband's sisters on that evening because the sister has protection, they don't, they can't afford protection. And um, they're going through something, their relationship's on the rocks, and uh, something happens to their car that leaves them stranded. And then on top of that, the mother and daughter get stranded and our mysterious character stumbles upon them and then has to make this moral decision that gets in the way of his grand mission of purging that night, should he help these, these desperate people and help them cross the city on this night where they really won't be able to survive without him because he has skills that they don't have. Frank is a real tough guy. He's not pretending to be tough. If anybody knows Frank and they'll see him in the movie, this is not a man pretending to be tough. Frank's actually really tough in real life. And we always said, let's not have an actor pretending to be tough. Let's actually get a real tough guy who can act too. I mean, he's, he's an actor first and foremost, I shouldn't say that, but he's also actually, a, he's, a, he's a man's man. <laughs> and, uh, and we always wanted that. We wanted someone who felt like a real 70s actor, a Lee Marvin type in the role. And I think Frank kind of captured that for us. The idea of the purge is that behind it all, behind what the government is selling, that you get to purge all your aggression and your hatred and it makes you a better citizen, which is kind of a ruse, it really doesn't do that. It, it's, it's the government's attempt to eliminate the lower class. Uh, no lower class, less government spending, no, no housing. So there's just, you know, the economy will, will be helped overall if there's less lower class. Zach, I just liked from Friday Night Lights. So he came in for a meeting and as I'm talking to him, um, I, he said his wife came in to read for Ava. So I'm like, well, who's your wife? And he's like, Keely Sanchez. I'm like, oh my God, she's my number one choice right now. And then it, I, I literally left that meeting saying, oh, we have to cast, you know, Keely and Zach as a married couple. That's like the perfect, what they can bring stuff I could never write. A real married couple could bring something to the table that I would never be able to create between two people who just met two weeks ago before we started shooting. And it worked great. They brought when there's a scene where they're bickering in a car, which plays actually as real because they've done that many times in real life. So it was, uh, when I found out they were married, it was just like we pushed it through and said we got to get these guys to do this. And, and they're both great actors, so we were lucky.